hello everyone and thank you for coming, um, particularly to our um, American audience who we see have actually got up at 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> I hope it's worth it. <laughs> right, I'm going to begin now. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the research I do at CFPR. Um, and basically, all the projects I run are based in the fact that I'm a practitioner, so I'm an artist, um, and I approach things in the way of kind of that kind of empathetic stance of I'm a practitioner, so what do other practitioners need to know or find out or what kind of things do they need to support their practice? So everything I do is kind of based in thinking about how other artists think or might benefit from the projects that we run. So I've been the editor of the Artist Book Yearbook um, since 2000. It was established in 1994 by Tanya Pesoto, who then handed the reins over when she went on to open up the amazing Book Art Bookshop in London. So the yearbook is published every two years and it's a kind of survey of contemporary practice in the field and it's also a resource for artists, librarians, curators to see the kind of artist publications that are being produced at the moment. And I also publish the Book Arts newsletter for CFPR. So this comes out every four to six weeks and is a kind of roundup of international activity in the field. So any kind of exhibitions, publications, courses, workshops, etc. Quite often some reviews and reports of practice. It's a free download. Um, the last issue was a slightly different because obviously most people around the world were locked up at home. So it was much more of a focus on online resources, but hopefully there's some museums and galleries opening around the world again soon, so the next issues should be a little more back to normal. And I also edit the Blue Notebook, which is the journal for artist books that we publish twice a year. And that really focuses on contemporary artist publications, artist books. Um, so it's kind of set up as a place for artists, writers to write articles about artist books that may not find a home anywhere else, so they might be a bit more experimental. But also the focus of the journal is to um, focus on kind of different pockets of activity around the world. So for example, we have artists writing about their collaborations with Cuban artists, or we might have someone reporting on artist books practice in Ukraine or from South Africa. So the idea is it's kind of, it's offering a kind of focus on different areas of activity from Australia to Brazil to Egypt, rather than the kind of normal Western focus that can happen sometimes. I'm also co-organizer of BABE, which is Bristol Artist Book Event. So I established that with Tom Selden and Peter Began on Feeney in 2007 because we really, really wanted to have an artist book fair in Bristol. So Babe is every two years. We did a mini Babe online event this year in May, um, which was hosted on, on Feeney's website. And we hope that Babe will take place again in spring 2021. It might be a bit like um, Willy Wonka, you might have to get the golden ticket. <laughs> It's, there might not be so many people allowed in. Who knows? But we're we're working towards something anyway. And we've recently, as Damien mentioned, had funding from the Nordic Council of Ministers. So this is a project actually that we're doing in collaboration with one of our alumni, um, Imi Morf, who is based in Norway. So between us, we have set up this kind of collaborative project with artists printmakers, publishers, and librarians to run a series of events. We'll be doing some live seminars and workshops to really introduce the idea of artist books being important works of art to librarians in the region. 
in collaboration with Nordic and Scandinavian artists. And I also work with Bar Ashton Library to um, put together exhibitions which take place in the cabinet that you can see on the right. So these would normally take place every four to six weeks. Unfortunately, Katerina Kaisalika, whose work you can see in the bottom left hand corner, <laughs> her artist books are still trapped in the library from her exhibition in March, and we hope to be able to post them back to her soon. Um, but the next exhibition will be in September, and that will be um, a series or a selection of new artist books that we've been purchased uh, since lockdown. And also um, that other events that normally take place in the library, such as um, you can see all the typewriters for Daniel Lehan's day page workshop. Um, and Franz Barker, who visited us from the Netherlands last year. So we hope, you know, stuff like that will go on again in the future as soon as we can get back in. And recently, we've also been working with World Book Night um, events. So these have been running since 2010 from an initial co collaboration with the poet and artist Nancy Campbell. Um, and they've kind of morphed into a much bigger participatory um, call for artists or the public to join in and make something or send us something. So for example, for the, um, the ones you can see here from Kathy's, this is Kathy Webb's artist book from the project in 2018. And Sue Valance's um, collage paste card for our project this year. Uh, the unfortunately prescient title, Should We Have Stayed Home and Thought of Here, which was about not travelling. Um, Serena Joy, which we did in tribute to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood in 2016. And the Gwalia Gazette, which was um, put together with our coordinator, Linda Parr, who organised the research trip for us in 2019. And Linda and I are now co coordinators of the projects and on Monday we'll be meeting up to put all of the auto paste cards into the mailing things to paste out for everyone for the artist exchange next week. And also I'm programme leader for the MA multidisciplinary printmaking course at UE which is a really lovely thing to do as well. So that's the kind of idea of the stuff that I'm involved in on a daily basis. But what I want to talk to you about now is the Read to Me project, which um, is kind of, it started off as one book project, but it's kind of grown into a kind of a longer project, which will run until next year. So the first iteration of the project um, which was done in collaboration with a psychometric reader was an experiment by me to try and transmit the emotional content of stories that I had been reading through a series of physical objects. And I'm going to explain to you how I did that in a minute. But basically it was 10 objects and 10 chapters or novels. And the project, as I say, began by accident in 2002. So in 2002, I was amazingly lucky to get an artist publishing residency award to spend a month in this amazing building at Visual Studies Workshop in Rochester, New York. They had an artist residency program where if you applied, um, you could you got an apartment around the back in the building and you could stay for four to six weeks and make an artist book. Um, and then you gave some back in return for the experience, which was fantastic. And the library and archive at BSW is just a treasure trove as well, with tons of amazing artist books there from the 60s onwards. And it was here chatting to other artists and students on the master's programme through Sydney Brockport that somebody mentioned the Fox Sisters. So the Fox Sisters 
were actually from a small town near Rochester, but actually they launched their careers as spirit mediums with a public performance on the 14th of November, 1849 at the Corinthian Hall in Rochester. So here I was in this lovely building, sitting in a library, a massive table, which in my mind wasn't probably that dissimilar to the kind of table that they would be using to demonstrate their spirit wrapping um, when they launched their careers. So although people um, kind of expose them as frauds later on, their performances and the things that they did actually massively influenced the founding of the spiritualist movement in America, which I think to me is very important in the sense that it, it gave women the chance to actually say something. Um, a lot of the spiritualist um, preachers and, and people involved at the top of the movement were women. And it was the first time that women could actually get up on a stage and say something without being kind of the assistant or the, the helper and it was at them and what they were saying that was the focus of attention. So I was thinking about the Fox sisters and that development and that idea of kind of performing and Tanya at Bookart Bookshop introduced me to Kurt Johannesson's book so that was kind of my head exploded then um, being introduced to his idea of exercises and the idea of um, him presenting a series of exercises that he says no one ever did. So obviously that's a challenge straight away because you want to do some of them. Um, this one here is about um, eating an orange and thinking about the moon. And then Mark Paulson sold me a copy of Grapefruit. So I was thinking of Yoko Ono's instructional artworks. So, and there's Steiner as well. So the idea that, um, Kurt went to this remote island and picked individual stones um, over 14 days, I think. And then he told each stone a fairy tale about trolls and put it back again. So all of this is kind of bubbling away in my mind when I'm thinking about what it is I want to do. And then I'm hugely influenced by people like Sally Alitalo, also known as Sarah Ranch House. So the idea is like she has this massive collection of um, romance novels. So the kind of books that you can buy like really cheaply in the airport or supermarket that she uses to create kind of performative artworks. So this picture is of her wearing her performance jacket, which she says keeps her nice and warm because it's full of stories about love. And the book cover on the left is her getting ready to perform the series of poems inside the book which are actually made from the titles of her romance novels. This book is fundamental influence to this project. Sisters of Menon by Susan Hiller was the book that I discovered as a student in the college library in 1991 that someone had put back on a shelf in the wrong place and I just picked it up and just thought what is that? But as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to do something similar to it. Um, so the idea for this project was that um, Susan Heller had this experiment called Draw Together. You'll see where this is going. Um, where she attempted to send images to her friends anywhere. The, the idea is that she would project an image from her mind and they would draw it. But she says instead found herself um, the recipient of messages as an agent of automatic writing. So this work became known as the Sisters of Menon um, and the idea again of that powerful collective of female solidarity. So on and off over the years I was still thinking about the Fox Sisters and how I could do something and you know I make artist books and I make books about books and I love reading and it's kind of all coming together and I just think well could I could I make a project in that way that Susan Hiller sent her images out or can I transmit something so could I actually transmit the emotion and all the feeling of some of the books that I've been reading to something and how on earth would I do that? Um, 
what I realized I needed was something called a psychometric reader. I had no idea how to find one. And obviously it's not as easy as it sounds and it took me 14 years to find them. And when I say find them, I didn't actually find them. I was on the holiday in, in summer 2017 with some friends from the Netherlands we, uh, who were asking me what I was doing. And I mentioned the idea for the project and we'd gone into a charity shop and I'd bought something and they said, that's not the kind of thing you'd normally have in your house, is it? So why are you buying it? So I explained what I was doing. And one of them said, oh, I've got a friend who does that. <laughs> so that was that. She texted her straight away. The next thing I knew, I have my psychometric reader already. So I thought, OK, let's get to work. Find the 10 objects to read my 10 stories to. So I chose a short story or a chapter from a book that I thought each object might enjoy or related to how they felt. Um, for example, the photograph in the frame here looks pretty miserable anyway. So I thought I'd read it some of Wuthering Heights since it was a miserable house on the moor. So I read the 10 stories to the 10 objects, packed them all in a box and posted them off to the reader in the Netherlands. So she sent the objects back to me with the handwritten readings in autumn 2017. And I used the objects, so the photographs of the objects that I'd taken to respond to with her text to write an article for Axon Journal, which is a kind of um, creative poetics and art journal based in Australia, but it's free access online. So anyone can read the articles. Um, basically, I did it because I was so excited to have these things back and I just really wanted to get on and do something with them. So in it, I kind of outlined my plans for what it was I wanted to do next summer. And then in July 2018, I went to London Centre for Book Arts. Um, and so I had a residency there to produce the book Read to Me and the amazing artist Esther McManus did all, all tons of colour tests for me before I arrived so I knew exactly what I was doing when I got there. So my residency at the centre, I had four days to make a hundred books so it was a bit full on. Um, I had Esther McManus printing with me on the rice printer and we were just rocking it. Um, I think we print, printed the whole book in one day. Um, and then other members of the studio helped. So Daniel and George helped me with some sewing. Simon and Ira helped with cutting and making up the little um, boards I needed and everything. And Christine brought in amazing lunches to share as well. So it was like a beautiful, supportive environment to go and work in. So thanks to all the help, happy helpers, I had a hundred books by July 2018 and I came back to work with them and arranged a touring exhibition. So first of all, they went back to Rochester. So they went back to Visual Studies Workshop, which was the place where the idea for the project was born. Um, and then it toured on to Winchester and the School of the Art Institute Chicago and the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma. So the books were sent with the objects um, as this traveling exhibition, which might sound quite big, but actually the whole lot fitted into a shoebox. And then afterwards, um, I did a later exhibition at Bar Ashton Library of the books that kind of influenced the production of this book, but also um, things that had happened since books that I'd found since I'd started the project, which I thought related to some of the ideas within the book of mine. And then I was thinking about the kind of books that I read for pleasure because they always influence the work that I make anyway. Um, we had Nancy Campbell's The Library of Ice, which we, one of the books we selected for World Book Night project for this year. Um, there was also Olga Tokachuk's flights, but by then 
I'm actually amazingly into Drive Your Plow because it's such a, a fantastic novel. Um, Zora Neale Hurston, her book inspired China Meville's short story that we chose for World Book Night 2018, and Irina Ratashinska. Something's going to happen from that. I'm reading that at the moment and I can feel something coming out of it. But I realised again, it's that idea of kind of um, feminism, solidarity, the idea that these are all books written by women who I admire, you've actually got something really important to say, um, which takes me back again to Susan Hiller and her idea of that collective of, of friends, of using other people to engage with your project and to help you produce something. So we've gone back to automatic drawing again. So this is one of the pages that I saw when I opened that book for the first time in the library. And just thought, I don't know what this is, but I want some of it. <laughs> so I decided that I would do my own experiment. Um, and again, remember that date, 14th of November. So that was 170 years to the day that the Fox sisters first did their public performance in Rochester, New York. So I decided I would set that date for my experiment, which took place at Arnolfini's bookshop at 6.30 p.m. in the evening. So I invited people to come along. Um, I provided paper and pens, and I asked people to close their eyes and concentrate on an image that I was projecting from a photograph that I was looking at in the bookshop. So that was for the people who were there and the people who weren't there, I gave it extra time to travel around the world so that people could join in remotely. And then we took all the drawings and we displayed them in an exhibition at Barrashton Library throughout December 2019. So from the experiment, I had four, 59 drawings that artists sent to me from all over the place. Um, some of them emailed them, some of them posted to them, them to me or just handed them in at the bookshop. But everyone who sent me a drawing, I gave them a postcard in return that was an automatic drawing that I had produced. So in my eyes, that was my token of exchange so what they had given me now belonged to me because what I wanted to do was to take that drawing and send it back to the psychometric reader in the Netherlands while I started organising some collage research. So this March, oh, brilliant timing, <laughs> the drawings were returned to me in the post. Thankfully, they got to work before lockdown. Um, so I'd anonymised the drawing, sent them to my collaborator. We'd agreed a certain amount of time that she would hold them and look at them. And then she would write down what came into her head. And I would use those words as a starting point for a series of colleges that will go into the new book that I'm going to be making. So the messages were quite short because we agreed a very short period of time because I didn't want her to spend weeks and weeks on it. I wanted her to react quite quickly, since she had 57 drawings to get through. So the kind of short text that I could use to start making some visuals. So for World Book Night, um, which Linda and I have been working on, we held a virtual exhibition of the postcards in April to June. Originally, we, had, we were going to do it as a physical exhibition at Barrow Ashton Library, but obviously things didn't pan out that way. So we quickly decided that we would make an online um, postcard album that would contain all of the postcards that have been sent in and that we would get on and organize the mail art exchange. So for the exchange, each person who sent in a postcard will get a postcard by another contributor and also one from the librarian, Bet Swishes, AKA Linda Parr, with text and designed and printed by Linda on her Adonna Press. And then we sent um, 10 or five or 15 out to each of the kind of key WN United Artists group um, so that they could 
um, embellish them or draw on them, rubber stamp them, print them and send them back to us so that everyone would get one postcard by somebody else and one postcard from the librarian. And then because everyone's locked at home, I've got all these envelopes ready to post out. So we'd started rubber stamping some of them and I thought, well, I need to practice my collage. So I'm just going to go on and do this. So in my spare time, I've been collaging envelopes that the little kind of keepsake exchange will go into and then these will go into the post and be sent out next week, hopefully, to all the people who contributed. So that was really helpful for me as a kind of practice run as well in, in thinking about the kind of how you use collage um, in the run up to actually making the book. Um, I should <laughs> have been at LCBA next week on another residency making my book, but obviously that's been rearranged. So next week, um, we should have been having a live collage colloquium at London Centre for Book Arts, which would have been the last day of my residency, having made a lovely book and having a great time and meeting lots of lovely people and working with them. Um, so we thought, well, if you can't do the residency now, I can rearrange that, that's fine. But I still wanted to actually listen to the people that we'd invited to join us. So that is going to be online. Um, it is sold out, but if you're absolutely desperate, I'm sure we can get you in somehow. Um, so just email me. But otherwise, we will record the talks and we will put them up on the website, on the Book Arts website afterwards. So you can listen to and watch the event. You won't be able to ask any questions, that's all. Um, in the meantime, we've set up a collage challenge called Wish I Was Where. So the idea is um, that we're inviting anyone to make a postcard by collage of where they'd like to be in the summer for their holidays, who they'd like to be with, post it physically and or online. If you post it online, please use the hashtag which I was where, and then we can find it and share it. Um, the instructions are on the CFPR Print and Book Fest website. So that's the big festival that we've just organized that finished on Monday. So that will be up for, well, forever, I guess. So you can still go and see lots of the talks and join in the challenges. So that's it, really. Um, thank you for listening. I've still got some of the automatic drawing paste cards that I made for the exchange for drawings with the contributors. So if you would like one, you can have one for free. So just email me at the address below and give me your address and I'll pop one in the post as soon as I can get back to work. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Sarah. That was really interesting. Um, really fascinating look at uh, the, the work that you do and a project that's been a long time in the making by the sounds of things. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> if you do have any questions, anybody, feel free to put them in the chat and I can relay them or you can stick your hand up. There's a little button just in the bottom in the middle next to where you unmute and put your camera on. Um, I'll get started. Uh, with regards to when you were sorting through the images, I was wondering, you know, when you, when you had them all out in front of you, was there any um, kind of strange occurrences, any, anything that looked weirdly similar coming from different parts of the globe or anything like that? Yeah, strangely. Um, I don't know because that was probably me going, oh, look at that. That's just like blah, blah, blah. Um, there were some <laughs> lovely ones. Um, I think particularly the one I used that's in the slide at the beginning, um, the artist from the States, he sent one that looks like a spiky book. Yep. I'm still not going to say what the image was that I was looking at, not just yet. Um, you're going to have to wait another year for that. Um, but there were some really really lovely um, visual correspondences between some of the drawings, as in um, a lot of them looked like they were about nature um, or about trees and mountains and things. So, yeah, it was great. And then things like um, when the reader sent some of the things back and I thought, well, that, that one, what was that one? It was like big love for Africa. And then as I looked down on the table, the I think it was the Guardian or the Observer weekend Journal just had this hand drawn globe of Africa that some that was on the front of <laughs> you can find it anywhere if you look for it. <laughs> Amazing. 
Um, so I guess the other part I wanted to ask you about was um, it's it's a little bit funny how how it turned out with it with it being this project about us kind of you know connecting at a distance and sending messages and all these things happening kind of just before lockdown. Um, you mentioned things that, that that kind of got put to the side because of it. Was was there any anything that was uh, helped by this strange time at all? Um, yeah, I think so. Um... I think particularly for World Book Night, Linda and I, I mean, last year we had probably, I think it was about 43 or 46 artists joined us last year. Um, so I was thinking, well, this really sucks because we were getting so excited, you know, stuff was coming in in the mail as the college was closing. We were like, no, we need to get, this, get the postcards. So the idea was that we were going to have this lovely exhibition um and you know all we'll get together and sort through the cards together and we were going to have a day um printing all the cards together with a group of about 12 artists but of course obviously everything just stopped and then people started getting in touch saying oh did you choose this <laughs> did you choose these things because you knew coronavirus was coming <laughs> like, <laughs> <"That's me." laughs> um but it was just unfortunately fortunate that um all of the all of the texts we were looking at were kind of looking at things like the implications of travel, mostly through environmental repercussions, but also um, the idea of kind of appreciating and not just traveling for the sake of it. So it was really kind of weird timing. And a lot of people joined the project because of that. We opened it up and said, um, you know, for our MA students, we said it was a challenge during lockdown that they could make a digital postcard and join in. So the ones in the album are physical and digital postcards that people have sent in to us. So yeah, we ended up with 98 people rather than the normal 50. So that was an amazingly good outcome, I think. Okay. Um, well, there's lots of uh, nice things being said in the chat, but um, I think we'll leave it there for today. Um, so thank you all so much for coming. Um, thank you, Angie, and thank you, Sophie, for helping out. Um, and thank you, Sarah, for the really fascinating talk. Oh, thank you.